the last person that we're going to cover is the least known of this journey. Uh, and his name is Abu Sahl Burayda ibn al Husayb radiallahu ta'ala anhu. Abu Sahl uh, Burayda ibn al Husayb or al Hasib. So Burayda is the least known of this group, and I want to talk about why I'm talking about him for a moment. How long was the Prophet in Mecca calling the people to Islam? A decade. Over a decade, right? And it was demoralizing. The public call of the Prophet ﷺ, it was demoralizing to the Muslims, of course, to be persecuted, to be run out between the Muslims that fled to Abyssinia, the Muslims that were beaten to death in Mecca, the Muslims that were starved to death in the boycott, the Muslims that are now fleeing to Medina. The Prophet ﷺ leaves Mecca after this decade with not that many followers, right? And on top of that, Ta'if happened. He went to Ta'if alayhi salatu wasalam, and he didn't find the reception that he was expecting from them, sallallahu alayhi wasallam. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam is still thinking with the heart and mind of da'wah, of calling to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So as he's going through the desert here and proceeding, and Allah is protecting him from these enemies, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam is not just thinking about protection, He's still thinking about the message Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He's always wearing that banner of da'wah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So he has passed through the house of Umm Ma'bad radiallahu ta'ala anha. Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has escaped, or rather Suraqa radiallahu anhu has escaped the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in this regard. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is at another point in his journey and they're finally starting to get close to Medina. Now obviously, the exhaustion of the journey, the tiredness of the journey, and subhanAllah, you're at that last stretch. And the Prophet ﷺ sees a tribe. Now, the chief of that tribe has a very imposing presence. And it's late at night, it's dark. And this could be it, right? He found him. And after this entire journey, someone's finally going to get that bounty from the Prophet ﷺ being taken back to Mecca. So the Prophet ﷺ, as this man approaches, you know, subhanAllah, the way that you carry yourself, it's not like Suraqa where the Prophet ﷺ makes dua against him or things start to happen to him supernaturally. The Prophet ﷺ just carries himself in a very interesting way. And Rasulullah ﷺ, before the man can ask him, Man ant, who are you? The Prophet ﷺ says to him, who are you? Man ant. And that is a way of actually owning the conversation, right? Because the pursued, the one who's running away, is going to start to flee in a different place. But if he says, who are you? Man al qawm Then that shows that there's nothing to worry about. So the Prophet ﷺ starts the conversation with him and says to him, man ant. And remember Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu is right next to him. Like this can end at any moment. Someone can say, oh, you're him? There's my hundred camels. So the man responds and he says, my name is Burayda. My name is Burayda. Now what do you call uh, cold, cool water? What do you call it? What do you call not Dallas right now? Dart. Right? Burayda comes from the same root word. So the Prophet ﷺ is asking, what's your name? He says, my name is Burayda. So Rasulullah ﷺ turns to Abu Bakr. Like look at the, look at the way he's owning the conversation Wasallam, And he says, yeah, Abu Bakr, baroda amruna wa salah. Our affair just got cool <laughs> and rectified. Barada amruna, right? So he used the play on the name of Burayda and said things are good now. And this is the same thing when the Prophet ﷺ said when he saw Suhail ibn Amr and he said Sahula. Suhail's name comes from easy. Our affair just got made easy, even though Suhail radiallahu anhu was not an easy negotiator. But the Prophet ﷺ found optimism in all of these things. So look at the way the conversation is proceeding in the middle of the desert. And the Prophet ﷺ says. Woman Ain, uh, who do you belong to? So SubhanAllah, look at how the conversation has started. Like, this man means no harm to us. Alhamdulillah, we're good. Like, we're travelers and we found goodness. So Burayda now said, and who are you? He said, I am Muhammad ibn Abdullah. The Prophet ﷺ did not shy away. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, I am Muhammad ibn Abdullah, Rasulullah, a messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And 
I have come with the message of Islam. Qala, man Islam? What's Islam? And the Prophet ﷺ gives him da'wah in that moment. Think about it, now you've got a desert, you're a fugitive, and you just revealed your identity and you're completely calm, composed, and now you're telling this message to these people in the middle of the desert. Rasulullah ﷺ tells him what Islam is. One God, the Lord of the heavens and the earth, and I am his messenger who's receiving divine revelation, and my people have run me out of Mecca, and I'm going to another people. And Burayda, here's the Prophet ﷺ, and Burayda, he's a simple man. He says to him, how do I embrace your religion? How do I become one of you? So he says, you say, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna Muhammadan Rasulullah. He said, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna Muhammadan Rasulullah. And Burayda says, hold on. And he goes and he talks to his people, 70 people. And he tells them about Islam, and all 70 of them follow their chief. So now on the way from Mecca to Medina, subhanAllah, Burayda radiallahu ta'ala anhu and his people have all become sahaba in a moment. Meaning subhanAllah, all of Mecca with its pain and its perse persecution and its trouble from the relatives of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wasallam, And now you have all of these people that are embracing Islam and captivated by the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam. And they stayed with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam. They learned the basics of Islam and Rasulullah has a jama'ah now in the middle of nowhere <laughs> of 70 people Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam but again he was close to Medina and Burayda says to the Prophet Sallallahu and where are you headed you know you should stay with us for some time and the Prophet Sallallahu explains that he's headed towards Yathrib at the time which of course becomes Medina and that the people are waiting for him in Quba Burayda takes off his turban and he ties it to the staff of the Prophet ﷺ. He said you should enter it with a, with a standard, right? You should enter it with uh, this, uh, this, this banner. And the Prophet ﷺ takes it. And Banu Sahm, this tribe of Burayda, remains Muslim. And they will join the Prophet ﷺ sometime after Uhud. So Burayda will join the Prophet ﷺ as a companion as well. And this tribe of people, subhanAllah, in one moment embraces Islam in a way that no group of people in Mecca embraced Islam with all of that da'wah and that trouble, which shows you, subhanAllah, you never stop giving da'wah and you never underestimate the person right in front of you. Never underestimate the moment. Never underestimate the person that's right in front of you and the influence you can have on that person. SubhanAllah, that's 70 people that were saved from the fire in a moment with the Messenger, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And Burayda radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he goes on to become a person. From the simple conversation of Hallaka fil Islam, do you want to learn about Islam? Burayda radiallahu anhu becomes a confidant to the Prophet. If you remember, if you go back and you listen to the biography of Juwayriya radiallahu anha, Burayda was the one who the Prophet sent to Ban al Mustalik to basically ask around and, and ask what was happening. Why? Because Burayda was not known to the people of Mecca, nor was he known to the people of Medina, and he wasn't known to Ben al-Mustalik, so he was the perfect spy. So he just went around in Ben al-Mustalik, and he asked, you know, what's going on here? And he learned as a spy that they were going to attack the Prophet ﷺ. They were planning to launch a surprise attack on the Messenger ﷺ. So he becomes a trusted confidant of the Prophet ﷺ. His being anonymous actually suits the mission that he would be given he goes on to become a great mujahid to fight in, uh, in, in multiple battles. And he is one of the people, and this is subhanAllah so beautiful, he's one of the people that the Prophet ﷺ allowed to be a flag bearer on the day of Fatih Mecca, on the day of the conquest of Mecca. So you got people like Talha radiallahu anhu and these lofty companions from Mecca coming back, and then you have this unknown man from the desert, Burayda radiallahu anhu, walking proudly in front of the army alongside the Prophet Sallallahu And by the way, he also goes on to become a narrator of hadith. And so some of the ahadith from Abu Musa al-Ash'ai radiallahu anhu that we mentioned were narrated by Burayda radiallahu ta'ala anhu. He narrates about 30 to 40 ahadith from his own radiallahu ta'ala anhu on behalf of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He was one of those who went in Tabuk. And the rest is history. And SubhanAllah, we learn through his story Another type of profile, the person who you look past. One of the messages that Allah gave the Prophet ﷺ was to not look past people. You don't look past people. 
The Prophet ﷺ could have easily seen this man as a nobody in the middle of the desert that he just needs to be saved from. But instead he goes on to become a great companion of the Messenger ﷺ and his people are saved from the fire as well. So just to recap on this journey of the hijrah of the Prophet ﷺ, it started off with the Prophet ﷺ leaving Ali ibn Abi Talib in his bed and the humiliation of the mushrikeen. And the Prophet ﷺ accompanied by Abu Bakr as-Siddiq anhu, and Amr ibn Fuhayra ta'ala anhu, and Abdullah ibn Urayqit ta'ala anhu. And by the time the Prophet ﷺ got to Medina, he had a miracle that was performed in the house of Umm Abad anha. He had a prophecy of the most powerful man in the world, the most powerful kingdom coming into or under Al-Islam. And he had a tribe larger than any tribe that would have embraced him in Mecca in a moment, in the middle of nowhere before he gets to Medina Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and then he enters into Quba Alayhi Salatu Wasallam and in each one of these incidents there's a great lesson and Burayda radiallahu ta'ala anhu would go on to pass away as well uh, as a Muslim and is buried in al Medina. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be pleased with all of the companions of the Prophet Sallallahu May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to be amongst those who are received by the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam at his hawl and that can behold him with that description of Umm Ma'bad radiallahu ta'ala anha and that can be given the bushra by him the way he gave the bushra to Suraqa radiallahu ta'ala anhu and that can be by his side and enter into Jannah in his ranks the way that Buraida radiallahu ta'ala anhu entered with his ranks into Mecca. Allahumma ameen.